Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. This week we're back at East Coast Gamers, and I'm playing my Erebos deck, and keep a hand with Deserted Temple, Runescar Demon, Read the Bones, Mindstone, Two Swamps, and a Burnished Heart. Liz is playing her Saskia deck, and keeps a hand with Swamp, Flame Blast Dragon, Kadama's Reach, Kessig Wolfrun, Conqueror's Flail, Felwar Stone, and Requiem Angel. Adam is playing his Ishkana deck, and keeps a hand with Swamp, Harrow, Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, Diabolic Tutor, Assault Formation, and Temple of the False God. And because we're so nice, we let Eric play his unofficial commander, Bodoka Gardener. He keeps a hand with Dust Bowl, Strip Mine, Two Forests, Constant Mists, Cultivate, and Horn of Greed. Adam wins the die roll and starts us off. Adam plays an Urborg and passes. I play a Swamp and pass to Liz. Liz plays a Swamp and passes to Eric. Eric plays a Forest and passes. Adam plays a Swamp and casts Soul Ring. I also play a Swamp and cast a Mind Stone. Liz breaks the mold and plays Kessig Wolfrun and casts a Felwar Stone. Eric plays a Forest and casts his unofficial commander, Bodoka Gardener. Adam casts Diabolic Tutor to tutor for a forest, which he tosses onto the field and passes to me. I play a Swamp and cast Ivory Tower. Liz casts Kadama's Reach in her main phase, grabbing a forest and a mountain. She has the forest come into play as her land for turn and passes to Eric. Eric taps his Gardener to play a Strip Mine. He then casts Cultivate and passes to Adam. Adam plays Temple of the False God as his land for turn, and then casts Harrow, sacrificing a Swamp to go and find two basics. He grabs two forests, and with the Temple now being active, casts Arachnus Spinner. On my upkeep, I gain one from the Ivory Tower, and play Swamp in my main phase. I then cast Read the Bones, scrying two. I put one on top, and one on the bottom, then lose two life, and draw two cards. Liz plays a Temple Garden tapped, and casts Chromatic Lantern. She then casts Conqueror's Flail, and passes to Eric. Eric casts a Horn of Greed in his main phase, prior to dropping a Reliquary Tower, and Eric draws from the Horn Trigger. Eric then activates the Gardener to put out a Forest. Paying 2 mana, Eric casts Magerite Stone, and pays to untap the Gardener, tapping him once more to put Tower of the Magistrate onto the battlefield. Adam plays Assault Formation before casting a copy of Plated Spider. Moving to combat, the Arachnus Spinner hits Liz for 7. I gain 2 on my upkeep from the Tower, and draw for turn. I play a Swamp, and cast Cryptgast. And with my swamps tapping for two, I need only two swamps to cast Erebos before passing to Liz. Eric reminds me I was supposed to draw from the Horn of Greed, and I remedy this quickly. Liz plays an Opal Palace and draws a card. She then casts Saskia with the Opal Palace, giving her a plus one plus one counter as she comes into play. Liz equips a flail onto Saskia and names me with Trigger, and moves to combat. She swings Saskia at Eric for eight commander damage, and upon hitting Eric, deals eight damage to me. She then passes. Eric plays a Forest, and the Horn triggers letting him draw. Eric then taps out to cast a Terastodon. Eric targets the Flail, Assault Formation, and Ivory Tower, and I hand out some Elephant Tokens. Adam plays a Bajuka Bog for his land for turn, exiling my graveyard as it enters the battlefield. He then casts a Conjurer's Closet before moving to combat. Adam swings a Spinner at me, which I chump with my Elephant Token. At the end of his turn, Adam flickers the Spinner with his Closet Trigger and passes. I play Cabal Coffers as my land for turn and forget to draw from the Horn of Greed again, but I remember shortly after. I then activate the coffers and tap one swamp to cast a Rune Scar Demon. I extort the demon, draining everyone for one and gaining three while tutoring a card. I cast the card I searched for, Liliana of the Dark Realm, while still holding my library and up to my walker to find a swamp. Liz plays a mountain for her turn and draws a card from the horn. She then casts Cathar's Crusade and follows up with a nature's lore to find a forest card. Eric plays a Terramorphic Expanse for his land for turn, drawing from the horn trigger. He then cracks the Expanse to go and find a forest tapped and resolves a growing rights of Itlamok. He reveals an Oracle of Moldiah from the four cards he gets to look at, and puts it into his hand. Eric is quick to cast said Oracle, and reveals the top card of his library, a forest. Eric plays the forest, revealing and drawing a forest thanks to his horn. Eric then passes turn. Adam plays a tapped Blooming Marsh, drawing from the horn trigger. He then casts Ishkana, Grafwudo, who is delirium as she enters, giving Adam three spiders. Adam then casts No Mercy, and moves to his end step. He blinks Ishkana, gaining three more spiders as she re-enters the battlefield. I play a Deserted Temple because untapping Coffers is fair magic. I then activate Coffers to make 7, using 1 to tap the Temple and untap Coffers. I re-tap it, floating 13 black mana, and use 3 to cast Burnished Heart, and then cast Nevenral's Disc, and pay enough to draw 3 and lose 6 life from Erebos' activated ability. I then uptick Liliana to find a Swamp, and cast Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots. I then put the Greaves onto the Cryptgast and move to combat. 
I swing the demon at Eric for six in the air, and I pass to Liz. Liz plays a clifftop retreat, drawing from the horn trigger. She then casts Requiem Angel, which triggers her crusade. All of her stuff gains a plus one plus one counter, and Liz wants her things to get bigger, so she casts Flame Blast Dragon. This gives all of her creatures another plus one plus one counter, and Saskia is starting to look a bit scary. Thankfully, Liz can't efficiently swing at anyone, so she passes to Eric. At the end of Liz's turn, Eric activates the Gardener to put out a forest, and the flip trigger goes on the stack. I respond to it by casting Silence the Believers, targeting the Gardener, and Eric puts his commander into the command zone. Eric draws and reveals Rude Awakening off the top. He then plays Thespian Stage, drawing and revealing a high marker off the top. Eric plays it off the top and draws again. Eric then casts Taproot Kami, and he does a quick count of all the forests on the field. Eric then recasts his unofficial commander and moves to his end step. This causes Groin Rites to flip into Itlamok Cradle of the Sun. Adam responds to the trigger by tapping one of his spider tokens to activate Arachnus Spinner's ability, and goes into his library to find Arachnus Web. He puts it onto Terastodon. Adam casts Cultivate in his main phase, finding a forest to the field and a forest to the hand. He then plays a forest and draws a card. Adam then moves to his end of turn, and the Arachnus Web triggers falling off Terastodon. Adam then puts the Closet trigger targeting the Skana, but Eric responds by activating his Tower of Magistrate to give the spider protection from artifacts, neutralizing the flicker. I play a Terrain Generator and finally remember to draw a card from the Horn Trigger. Apparently I hate free cards. I then activate the Generator by tapping a Swamp and put out a Swamp. I then sacrifice the Burnished Heart to grab two more Swamps, but Eric responds by sacrificing a Strip Mine, and before letting that trigger resolve, he has his Thespian Stage become a copy of my Cabal Coffers. I also activate my Cabal Coffers before losing it and float 9 black mana. I then take 8 damage to draw 4 cards from Erebos and cast a Thought Vessel before passing to Liz. Liz plays a mountain for her turn and moves to combat. She swings the Flame Blast Dragon at Eric and the Requiem Angel at me. Liz puts the Flame Blast trigger on me and redirects it to Liliana, paying enough to kill her. I also jump the Requiem Angel with my Runescar Demon and Eric jumps with his Kami. Liz then passes and Adam activates his Arachnus Spinner, tapping one of his tokens to put the web onto the Gardener before Eric has a chance to start popping out huge elementals. Eric plays a forest off the top of his library, revealing and drawing Ash Barons. Eric then cycles Desert of the Indomitable, revealing Exploration off the top as he draws. Eric then plays Ash Barons, drawing Exploration and revealing life from the loam. Eric pays 1 to cast the Exploration and plays a Dust Bowl, drawing the life from his Horn Trigger. Eric then casts life from the loam and gets back his Terramorphic Expanse, Strip Mine, and Desert of the Indomitable. Activating his copied Cabal Coffers, Eric floats 16 black mana. Using 1 green and 1 black, Eric cycles the Desert once more to dredge life from the loam back to his hand. Eric casts Druidic Satchel, and he casts Life once more to get back his desert, which Eric once again cycles to draw Rishkar's Expertise off the top. Rishkar's Expertise then comes out, and Eric draws 9 because of his Terracidon, which he reveals off the top. Eric then gets to put out his Eternal Witness for free from the Expertise, and retargets the Expertise. Tapping his Cradle Nouveau, Eric floats 5 green mana and recasts the Expertise once more. I'm not super comfortable with Eric drawing a further 9 cards at this point, so I pop my disc while the spell is on the stack. As a result, Eric doesn't get to draw anything, but he does get to put out Gaia's Touch. This lets Eric play yet another forest, and using most of his remaining mana, Eric recasts his Commander and Sakura Tribe Elder before passing to Adam. Adam recasts Ashkana in his main phase, getting three spiders from the Delirium trigger. He then casts Canopy Spider and passes. At the end of Adam's turn, I pay two mana and two life to draw a card. I waste no time on my turn casting Sepulchral Primordial, taking Adam's Arachnus Spinner, Eric's Eternal Witness, and Liz's Requiem Angel. With my Eternal Witness trigger, I bring back my Thought Vessel, which I cast, and then pass to Liz. Liz's turn is pretty quick, and she plays a Forest for her land for turn, and casts a Windbrisk Raptor. Liz then passes. Eric plays a Forest, and activates the Gardener to put it in another Forest, and it transforms, or flips, or whatever we can call it, into Dokai Weaver of Life. He also puts out another Forest to the Gaia's Touch, and then pays 5 to cast Seedborn Muse. Eric then passes to Adam. Adam untaps, and so does Eric. Adam then plays a Swamp and activates Ishkana's ability to have Eric lose 5 life. Adam follows up with a Damnation, and Eric responds by creating a 20-20 Elemental with Dokai. He then casts Momentous Fall to sacrifice said Elemental and draws 20 cards but gains no life. Eric sacrifices the Sukur Tribe Elder while the file is on the stack to get a basic out first though. Damnation then resolves and wipes the board while I gain 3 spirits from the Requiem Angel triggers. I play a Swamp for my turn and cast Whip of Erebos. 
I then cast Knight's Whisper to lose two and draw two, before casting Stratoscythe, exiling a swamp from my library. I then gear up one of the swamps with a scythe, and swing at Adam for 11, gaining 11 as well. Liz plays a forest for her turn, and casts a Hellkite Tyrant. She then recasts Saskia using her Opal Palace, and Saskia comes into play with two counters. She also names Eric this time, and swings Saskia at him. Eric responds by casting a constant Missy's hat in his hand since the beginning of the game, and pays for the buyback, neutralizing her combat step. With nothing else, Liz passes turn. Eric plays two forests in his main phase, and activates his copy Cabal Coffers. He uses some of the mana to cast Thematic Compass, and then drops a Verdant Sun's avatar, who sadly doesn't help him too much right now. Eric then casts Indrik Stomp Howler, targeting my poor innocent Whip because he's just jealous of my life gain. Sylvan Ranger then hits the field for Eric, and he goes to find a basic, and Liz comments how small Eric's library is now that most of it's in his hand. Badoga Gardener then comes back out again, and Nisa's Pilgrimage has Eric to go find three forests, one on the field and two to his hand. Eric then casts Rude Awakening Entwined, untapping all of his lands and having them become two twos. Moving to combat, Eric swings enough lands to kill me, and two lands at Adam for four. In his second main phase, Eric then taps his Itlamok to create 23 green mana, and uses some of it to cast Illusionist Bracers, which he equips onto the Gardener. Eric then casts Regrowth to return Rude Awakening to his hand, and drops Hall of Gemstones before passing to Adam. Adam untaps and names green for Hall of Gemstones. He draws for turn, and cycles Polluted Mire, drawing again. Adam then plays Overgrown Tomb, taking two to have it come into play untapped, and recasts Ishkana, gaining three spiders as she enters. Adam then passes to Liz. Liz names white on her turn, and draws. She plays a command tower before playing Sunblast Angel, needing a blocker for Eric's next turn, more than a board wipe she might not be able to use if she gets taken out. Eric untaps and names green, obviously, and taps the gardener to play Scorched Ruins, sacrificing two lands. Eric then recasts Root Awakening Entwined before moving to combat. Eric swings enough to kill Adam, and the rest at Liz. Realizing she can't really win the game on her own at this point, Liz scoops it up, and we move on to another game. Game review time, so who would have guessed someone who had two lands that could essentially produce 40 mana and a ton of card draw would have won the game? I do have to give Eric props for using Root Awakening as a means to kill everyone by attacking with land since that's the first time I've ever seen it happen, and typically I only see it used in a deck for Harry when he combos off. I'm sure some people are going to be upset because Badoka Gardener is not technically a legal commander, but my focus for playing the game has always been about fun, and one half of it is a legendary creature. I thought Adam's Ishkana Graph Widow deck was pretty cool, especially considering it was tribal spiders, but I think that was also ultimately its downfall. There just aren't a ton of good spider cards to make it worthwhile, so you'd have to go other ways, and I think playing things like Plated Spider and Canopy Spider, while decent chump blockers, really are not worth the mana they're invested in. Liz's Saskia deck got very scary very quickly considering she only played like four creatures in the entire game. I think Saskia is criminally underplayed considering how she's effectively able to hit two people at once, or double up on one person and really go to town on them. I've oftentimes seen her built as human or soldier tribal, so seeing her with other creatures was a very fun thing. In terms of my performance, I'm really not too sure what else I could have done. I drew a bunch of cards and had a ton of ramp, I just didn't get anywhere though. I probably could have been a bit more aggressive popping the disc earlier into that big turn where Eric basically went crazy and cast a million spells, but I do think when I did pop it, it had a huge impact on his board. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit my Patreon link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.